Hello and welcome to Adam versus the Man. Today is Thursday, July 2nd, 2020, and I promise today I will not talk about the virus named after the beer. Gosh darn it. I just did it, didn't I? I, there's, I just did it. You can't... It's... It's not even a significant health phenomena in the history of the glo global human petri dish. And yet, I I can't, I can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. It's just, it's this cloud hanging over the entire world. And it's not, <sighs> we're talking about a virus that has a lower mortality rate than trying to spend a counterfeit $20 bill in Minneapolis. And it's not the virus. It's not the virus that is the cloud. It's the fear around it. It's the government response. I want to, I want to talk about the economy. I want to talk about jobs. I want, I want to talk about what's going on in the world that's, that's more important. And you know what? There's, there's nothing. There's, there's nothing that I can talk. I, I mean, I'm looking, like, there's nothing it doesn't touch. I want to talk about Donald Trump. Can you talk about the president? Can you talk about government right now without talking about coronavirus policy? Can you talk about the criminal justice situation without talking about corona and, and people getting corona in jail? No. I mean, can you talk about internet censorship and not mention how this is being used? To further censorship online, to, to control, to lock down the conversation. This looks like a reboot of the economy, as in we're going to shut it down and reboot it with a new operating system. What's that new operating system? Well, is it is it really that? Well, the new operating system is government gets to shut you down whenever they feel like it whenever their sponsors want them to, because it's going to benefit them economically. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. That's the whole point. Now, with the jobs numbers today, we go to zerohedge.com. Great job numbers. Trump booms as payrolls soar by record 4.8 million mm -hmm. crushing, crushing expectations. And, oh, my gosh, what, what a dystopia the new normal already is. These statistics didn't really mean anything before this. Seasonally adjusted non-farm payroll. And you go, well, what the heck does that mean? And I urge you to keep in mind through all of this right now that 83.695483%, that's a very precise number, of all statistics, are total made up BS designed to manipulate you. I mean, even, even yesterday, my brother, who's a health professional, sends me this chart that says, look, look how COVID has overtaken all these other causes of death. And it's got this timeline and it shoots up. And oh my gosh, in just a, just a few months, COVID is uh, on this chart become the leading cause of death. And you go, that's COVID versus various causes of death. It's comparing it to the flu and suicide and a bunch of other, I don't want to say minor, but second tier causes of death behind, you know, heart attack, cancer, all the chronic conditions that uh, Americans are killing themselves with, you know, and then you know, the, the jobs report today, it's, it's more propaganda. I mean, if, if you kill 50 million jobs and then, Five million of them come back, and that's that's a record number of jobs being created. Well, yeah, of course the president can turn that into some kind of spin propaganda for his floundering re-election campaign. The story at Zero Edge goes, in our preview of today's jobs report, we remarked that the only thing that was certain about the June payrolls number is just how uncertain it was, dropping the top and bottom 10% of payrolls forecasts still leaves a range of 1.65 to 5 million jobs, an extremely wide band that reflects the multiplicity of shocks 
hitting the U.S. labor markets, according to Stephen Englander. Art Cashin echoed just how much confusion there was by noting that, quote, most traders are somewhat skeptical of all payroll data, feeling that the sharp reopenings and then reopening rollbacks have distorted the data. I think that's putting it mildly. So with so much confusion out there and nobody really sure what to expect, moments ago, the BLS reported that in keeping with the huge band of possibilities, in June, the U.S. economy added a whopping record 4.767 million jobs, crushing expectations of 3.058 million and indicating that the V-shaped recovery, if only on the BLS servers, is well on track. And this goes to the bifurcation of the economy that's happening right now. There's a split between the white market and the black market. And, you know, this is obviously uh, a misnomer because white suggests good and black suggests bad in this case. Gee, I think there's 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 some other inherent message being sent when they use these terms. Right. But no, what is the what is the white market, the government approved market, the regulated by violence market, the exploitation market of everybody who doesn't work under the table? and has taxes withheld from their paychecks. Just And, and every business that, that operates in that way, right? What's the black market and the gray market, really? part of The parts of the economy that the government can't control, that, the, that it cannot exploit. I mean, we look at this new normal. What is this? What, what is the new rebooted system? It's a system where the government can pull the strings of the economy more than ever before. They can decide. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, Hunger Games. Who lives? Who dies? No, but it, they get to decide who works and who doesn't. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's not as harsh as who lives and who dies, but there are implications. Massive, massive implications. And then also from Zero Hedge today, want to kill the economy, keep threatening more lockdowns. See, that's all it takes. The first time the lockdowns came, the job market imploded. 40 million Americans lost their jobs, and at least 20 million of those are still unemployed. That's, again, you know, you use these government numbers, you got to read between the lines. It's probably a lot worse than that. Income in America fell to such low levels that federal tax revenues fell by more than 50% year over year in April and remained down more than 25% in May. These are losses of historic proportions. It remains to be seen if the country even began anything that could realistically be called a recovery in June. After all, new unemployment claims were still at over a million new applicants, according to the most recent data. That's still off the charts bad. Nonetheless, we continue to hear about how any day now we'll see evidence of a V-shaped recovery in which jobs and economic growth will come roaring back. And like we saw with the jobs numbers, with Trump saying, oh, yes, these job numbers are great. Well, what was the tweet from you know, news conference at 930? Great job numbers. So the end of the, uh, the jobs report article on Zero Edge goes, how political was today's report? We will leave it to readers to decide, especially when moments after the report, Trump, who knew the numbers yesterday, praised the great job numbers and held a press conference at 9.30 a.m. today for a victory lap. That said, it was a modest downgrade from last month's Trump tweet that, quote, these numbers are incredible. So to the other story, also from Tyler Dirt and Zero Hedge, but now we're already seeing governments, by which I mean a small cadre of governors and unelected bureaucrats who currently rule by decree, announcing another round of business closures and ongoing government regulations that micromanage every aspect of a business's daily interactions with customers. This is likely to greatly slow any V-shaped recovery that might have been forming, and it will give businesses reason to further put off plans for implementing efforts at recovering from the economic crash experience in April and May. 
And for any business owner that has anything that is affected in any way by this, and I, I can't imagine any that isn't, you know, the, the fall in tax revenue, that's a really big marker of the failing of the white market and the overall economic decline we're experiencing that isn't captured in the jobs numbers. Because for a lot of people, hours have been hugely cut. And you're, if you're, I mean, Oh man, my heart goes out to everybody in that position. You're in a job where you know maybe you're working on commission, maybe you're we're working hourly, but your income has been cut by or your hours have been cut by you know fifty percent or something, and you don't know. You don't, you're and you're holding on to this job like it's your lifeline, it's your thing. This this fragile agreement that you have with an employer fragile certainly now in this era of lockdowns and unlockdowns and re-lockdowns and who knows what's coming next and with that uncertainty you can't plan for anything except going along with the whims of government at the behest of their corporate and banking class sponsors and that's where we find ourselves today what governments all over the world has done, have done, is put this cloud over the world that has cast a shadow, which will take a long time to get rid of.